Hey guys, what's up? So something a little different again uh, for the uh, video. So I was thinking that the university is kind of an odd building in the uh, the Age of Empires world, as uh, that and the blacksmith are the only two buildings that just research upgrades don't make any units. And the blacksmith, uh, well, the upgrades are not only one very important, but two, uh, it's pretty obvious what they do. And a lot of the university techs definitely, I think, fly under the radar. Uh, it might not be clear just how good they are in what situations you want to grab them. So that's what this video is for. So you can do some learning at the university. And uh, let's just uh, take a dive into this university and its techs. All right. So first things first. Uh, the university, well, I mean, it's a building that researches technologies. So might as well take a look at it in the tech tree. Um, I'm actually on Koreans, because Koreans, fun fact, only live in the game that has a 100% complete university. So we'll just go through the texts one by one, and just know that, uh, what is it, was it, uh, ballistics and chemistry are, and murder holes are available to all civilizations, no matter what. Uh, so yeah, ballistics, chemistry, murder holes, Everybody gets everything else. Uh, all the other techs have some sort of, uh, you know, limitation in terms of which civs can use them and which cannot. So just going through these in order of how they appear in this tech tree, we'll start with masonry and its good friend architecture. So masonry, obviously 150 food, 175 food. If you watch my stream, uh, I say it's like one of the best, most underrated techs ever and is probably... One of the reasons I'm making this video in the first place. But it says here, strengthens all buildings by providing 10% more hit points, one normal, one pierce armor, and three building armor. That might not be too clear what the, the armor uh, additions mean, but of course the 10% extra HP is pretty obvious. And uh, architecture is essentially the same upgrade again. It does the exact same thing as masonry, just costs a little bit more. And of course it stacks with... Uh, the you know castle age variant so let's uh let's go into the editor and show exactly what these texts do and how they affect uh your gameplay in terms of when you want to use them all right so let's first uh demonstrate the difference of hp i mean this one's pretty straightforward uh here we have this aztec castle that has no upgrades this Bulgarian castle has only masonry, and this one has masonry plus architecture for the Chinese castle. So we have four capped rams attacking each, and this, you know, if, if uh, logic holds, the Aztec castle will be destroyed shortly before the Bulgarian castle, and then the Chinese castle will be destroyed last. Now that is not the biggest difference in the world, but it could save you, you know, a precious... 10 to 12 in-game seconds, and that is no small deal, especially for a building that is as important as a castle. So I would say that, you know, the HP benefits alone, uh, you could probably justify getting these upgrades in a lot of situations. All right, guys, now for the armor aspect. So this one's a little bit trickier. So what I've done is I've modified all of the TCs to have... Uh, the same HP, except for this Byzantine one that I added in, where it actually has 10% more HP, but, uh, you know, Byzantines don't get masonry or architecture. And uh, so, yeah, the HP of all of these is going to be the same. Aztec one, same thing, no uh, masonry or architecture. This one, the Bulgarian one, does have masonry, no architecture. And the Korean one now has masonry and architecture. If you're wondering why I changed it from Chinese to Koreans, uh, the Chinese one spawned three villagers. But just look at the difference, guys. I have, uh, you know, six post-imp uh, Saracen galleons firing away at these town centers. But the uh, this is just the armor. All of these three town centers have the same HP. And this one actually has more HP, but has the same armor as the Aztec town center. And this the reason I chose to use the ships in particular is because I feel like this is one of the situations where the armor bonus is actually the most relevant. I mean, look at this. This the the freaking Korean town center is not even uh not even taking a scratch. Same HP, just more armor. You're going to see that the Byzantine town center again with 10% more HP than the other ones is going to die 
the second fastest. Yeah, there goes Belisarius. I forgot to give him another unit. But yep, going to be around the same time as a town center with masonry. Even though compared uh, to normal masonry, the Byzantine town center would have even uh, more relative HP. But yeah, like, look, the one with architecture. No, it's 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 a little under half health. I mean, it, it, the galleons are going to get there eventually, but. Yeah, this is why, like I was saying, the armor aspect is most noticeable with uh, ships, but also some other good examples where the armor is going to matter a lot is things like uh, units that get moderate amounts of bonus damage against buildings, like against Tarkins, against, uh, with uh, elephants of any kind, with uh, Burmese cavalry, with uh, Monopor cavalry, or... Uh, Mayan archers with obsidian arrows. All those situations, the armor is going to be just as, if not more important than the HP. The HP is much more important when it comes to like large units that deal a lot of damage, i.e. siege units and cannon galleons, uh, just because like the little difference in armor doesn't matter a whole lot. But as you can see here, we are just about to get this town centered down. I mean, I wasn't even paying attention. How much longer did that TC last compared to all the other ones? It's pretty crazy. But yeah, that is masonry and architecture, guys. Uh, it's not like an upgrade you're going to need to super prioritize, but, you know, masonry is pretty cheap. Architecture for its stage in the game is pretty cheap. If you have the spare food and wood, you can totally pick them up. And uh, having your buildings be destroyed that much more slowly is generally uh, pretty nice, especially if there's a lot of raiding going on, and especially if you are up against those uh, these situations like I was talking about where the extra armor can be the difference between uh, <laughs> a two-minute kill or a five-minute kill. And of course, the HP can be just absolutely critical in a treb war. Um, hoardings just actually, guys, gives you 20% extra HP, so it's like masonry plus architecture together, but it does not give you the armor that those uh, upgrades convey. So again, just showing you how, like, for you know, big buildings against siege, HP is more important uh, against smaller to medium units. The armor is more important, but you get both with the upgrades. So that's just masonry and architecture in a nutshell. And uh, yeah, now let's move on to the next tech. All right, so next up in our magical trek through Academia, uh, we have Fortified Wall. Now this is an upgrade that is very cheap, only 200 food and 100 wood, and it says, well, it upgrades your stone walls to fortified walls, which are stronger and harder to breach. Also goes for gates. Now uh, that isn't very helpful in terms of, uh, well, how much does it help you? How useful are fortified walls compared to stone walls? But uh, yeah, that is what we are going to dive into. Uh, next. But before I jump in, actually, I should just say uh, most civilizations in the game have access to Fortified Wall. Uh, there are only a few that don't. Uh, of course, Goths and Cumans can't even build stone walls. And then civilizations like Huns, Magyars, uh, Persians, probably some other ones I'm forgetting off the top of my head, they don't have a uh, Fortified Wall, but they do have Stone Wall. So let's, uh, let's make this comparison, shall we? So obviously the uh, fortified wall is going to do way better than the stone wall. I mean, it is an improvement, but this is just to show you how much of an improvement it is and in what sorts of situations uh, you would want to be going for these. So uh, it improves with HP and armor, which is why I have sort of the HP test here with these two siege rams and the armor test with these battle elephants as uh, battle elephants. Like I said, one of those units where the armor difference does, you know, matter. But, I mean, this is just a... Obviously, it's... <laughs> the fortified walls are lasting a fair bit longer in all scenarios. So, the question becomes, okay, it's 200 food, 100 wood. Is this something you need to rush out in Castle Age? Or is it something that, you know, you can wait on a little bit? Um, if you're playing something like Black Forest and you really need to stall for time, yeah, there, there's no question about it. Like, the fortified walls are just representing a massive, massive, massive increase in durability compared to their poor little stone counterparts. Also know that stone walls in Feudal Age only have 900 HP um, for balancing reasons. 
So these are castle age uh, stone walls and gates. So it, it is comparing uh, apples to apples, as they say. But I mean, you guys can see just uh, it is a massive, massive improvement for a fairly cheap upgrade. All right. So next up, we have uh, ballistics. Now, this is a tech that it's often talked about in conjunction with archers. Uh, but it does also impact, uh, as it says here, town centers, castles, galleys, unique naval units, and mounted archers. So pretty much anything that uh, is benefiting from your uh, fletching, uh, bodkin, and bracer, with some exceptions. But it is fairly pricey for Castle Age, 300 wood, 175 gold. So if you want to go for this in early Castle Age for your archers or whatever, um, it is definitely... An investment you have to make, but uh, let's show this in practice. Okay, so now to test ballistics. Now, there have been uh, other people who've done videos on this uh, topic in the past, so I'll make this pretty quick. You can see that without ballistics, this uh, cavalier here is not taking a whole lot of damage. Most of the arrows are missing, but once I delete this outpost, I will research ballistics for myself, and then you can just watch the difference. Arrows much more accurate. And there he goes. Uh, so this does apply, like I said, to pretty much all archers. Anything that benefits from uh, your ranged attack upgrades. That includes all towers, castles, town centers. Uh, even bombard towers, for some reason, do benefit from ballistics, as do Burmese Arambai. Uh, but like I said, uh, this is one of those texts that actually is gotten all the time for very good reasons. So this is just a, a quick demonstration of what it does again. All right. So next up are our tower, uh, arrow firing tower upgrades, I guess. Uh, guard tower and keep. So these are obviously just upgrades of the Feudal Age watchtower. Uh, fairly cheap to 100 food, 250 wood for guard tower and 500 food, 350 wood for keep. Now, the differences between guard towers, watchtowers, and keeps is what I will be demonstrating next. It is, though, I think fairly intuitive uh, as to how good they are and what they do. But still, there are some uh, specific thresholds I want to go over. Okay, so here we have our three towers, watchtower, guard tower, and keep. Uh, it's hard with these to really have an effective test that shows the different, like, the relative strength because... It's, you know, three different ages we're talking about. But still, nonetheless, all these towers only have fletching as an upgrade. And you're going up against two mangonels. Uh, also, the watchtower is in castle age, so you can see that it does have the 1020 HP. And uh, that watchtower was only able to take down 19 HP on my mangonel before dying. Looks like the guard tower will be able to take down at least one mangonel, and the keep is already well on its way to taking down... Uh, my other mangonel over here. No, you don't get to attack too. Yeah, the keep is... So, the mangonel here does win against the guard tower, but loses one in the process, and the keep is able to stay alive with around a third of its HP left. Equal upgrades, but again, this isn't really the sort of situation you'd ever find yourself in, at least a, not a lot of the time, but still, it goes to show guard towers better than watchtowers, keep better than guard tower. And you just, uh, the situations where you want to research guard tower especially is, okay, if you have several towers in Castle Age, you can get the guard tower upgrade. Guard towers have seven base attack. You get Bodkin, that's uh, nine base attack. And you can see that these mangonels here only have six pierce armor. So you then have your guard towers dealing three damage per hit to mangonels, whereas even uh, watchtowers with Bodkin, meanwhile, would only be dealing one damage a shot because they have a seven base attack. So that is actually a really big break point when it comes to, uh, you know, damage in terms of the stuff you normally face in Castle Age. So if you're staring down the barrel of a lot of mangonels, having that extra damage does make just a massive difference. Now, keeps, when do you get keeps? It's a little less obvious. It's just a matter of, okay, it's Imperial Age. Do you have a bunch of towers left for some reason? Are you trying to go for a tower push? This is totally uh, a viable thing with civs like Koreans or 
uh, Japanese, especially with those Yasuma keeps. Uh, but you can also do so with uh, Britons or, you know, whatever. It, it's more of, it's less of a, a commonly seen upgrade, but it's kind of like, okay, if you're Imperial Age, if you're making towers, obviously go get it. Next up, we have Heated Shot. Ooh, this is a fun one. You can see it's pretty expensive. Uh, 350 food, 100 gold. It's kind of a uh, half and half, I'd say, around there. Uh, sieves that have Heated Shot versus sieves that do not have Heated Shot. But towers cause 125% more damage to ships. Castles cause 25% more damage to ships. So obviously it's a much, much, much bigger boost for towers, but also does affect castles as well. What does that translate to in-game? Well, that is what I am here to show you. Okay, so for the test, um, the Italian player, or red here, will have heated shot, and uh, the Saracen player will not. Everything's else, everything's as else is the same. Got a bunch of war galleys, i.e. 10. And I mean, you'll just see for yourself uh, how absolutely massive a difference this is. Well, actually, no, I started with 12, just because the uh, tower here is already working away so quickly. So it is 100, it's plus 125% damage for towers. So you're getting plus however much bonus damage the towers have. I forget exactly how much for each tower, but obviously it will scale up with the, the better tower you have. I just have a uh, post-Castle Age tower as an example. So not only does it help in terms of killing stuff quickly, but uh, if you kill stuff quickly, then you will have more HP left afterward. So if you're on a water map and you uh, are, say, playing Islands, which is in the current map pool. See, the, the tower just... It's literally the difference between the tower being destroyed with eight galley, eight war galleys left. I guess one of them has a little bit less HP. And then the tower surviving with around a third of its HP left. Like, that, that is an insanely huge difference. But as I was saying, if you're playing islands, then, like, getting some towers up with heated shot on the center islands can just make such a massive difference and is definitely a uh, a point to consider when thinking of uh, which sort of water civilization you'd want to go for, because, uh, say, Japanese do not have heated shot, whereas Italians do, uh, etc., etc. So uh, that's the effect for towers, and uh, I'll show you the more modest difference, but still definitely difference it makes for castles. Okay, so here we have pretty much the same test, but this time with uh, 15. Uh, galleons post-imperial age against two castles that are the same other than the fact that Incas have heated shot whereas Mongols do not. Now for castles you'll see that yes it's helpful but it's only plus four which uh, as far as castles goes uh, is not a massive you know percent increase in damage and that castles are, are already so tanky especially once you get say masonry and hoardings which are uh, both of these uh, players have. Like, uh, Galleons, uh, they're, they're not really going to be doing a whole heck of a lot to them anyway. Or, you know, any ship other than Cannon Galleons in which they're out of range of the castle, so it doesn't matter. But still, it is a noticeable difference, I would say. Um, but I would not really call it a, a priority. And probably not even worth getting if you only have castles, unless you're in a team game situation with trade. All right, last quick test here. We have harbors. Now, I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah, so the yellow player should not have heated shot, whereas the red player should. Uh, heated shot affects harbors in the same way it does castles. So uh, they get plus four attack. And you can see that uh, Unbelay do obviously have heated shot. They're the only civ that can make harbors. You can see that, again, it does make a noticeable difference, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. That said, since you're likely to be spamming a lot of harbors, if you are Malay, I'd recommend getting it anyway, uh, just because, you know, even a small difference added up a bunch of different times is going to result in a big ol' snowball. So yeah, that's Heated Shot. 
definitely, I would say, an underrated tech when it comes to uh, defending on water maps. All right, so next is murder holes. Um, we don't really need to show a clip for this one because it's, you know, pretty obvious what it does. Uh, no minimum range for castles, towers, harbors, and creposts. Um, that includes pretty much everything, every single building, defensive building that can fire arrows, except for town centers, which uh, do not need murder holes. And when... Okay, so this, this one's a bit more situational because, uh, one, it costs stone. Uh, less than it did in Age of Conquerors, but still does cost 100 stone. And two, because it removes the minimum range for all of those buildings, it means that they'll prioritize uh, attacking whatever's closest, and oftentimes that involves rams. And if you have, say, um, some arbalests that are in the line of fire of a castle, but uh, there are some rams in front of it, the castle would target, the obviously, the arbalests once the rams got within minimum range, uh, without murder holes, but with murder holes, it would just target the rams and then you're not killing stuff as efficiently. That said, uh, it can be a nice tech in, like, say, late game scenarios if you're getting raided by a bunch of stuff. You know, it, it, it pretty much ensures that you can't just use normal units to take down a castle. Uh, you need siege and you can't do it without heavy losses or, you know, towers or whatever. Next one is Treadmill Crane. Uh, a little on the pricier side at 300 food, 200 wood. Uh, villagers construct buildings 20% faster. Again, it's really, really straightforward. Um, I don't think I need to uh, show you that in action. Uh, but that's not to say it's not a useful technology. Is it something that you prioritize in Castle Age? No. But in late game, if you have, you know, food and wood floating a little bit, it definitely can be helpful. Uh, when it comes to just like, okay, you're trying to build a bunch of forward archery ranges or something, and, you know, getting those archery ranges up 20% faster does make a pretty noticeable difference. So, again, it's not a bad tech, um, but it's not something that I would uh, ever prioritize, I guess, in Castle Age. Uh, notably, it is a very important tech in Deathmatch. Um, now, you might be thinking, Ornlu, in Deathmatch you start with post-imperial. Well, yes, but it's a matter of which civs have Treadmill Crane and which do not, because uh, unlike Murder Holes, uh, which everybody has, uh, Treadmill Crane, you uh, it's again like around half the civs or something, I don't know. And in, the, in Deathmatch, it just makes such a big difference in terms of getting off to building your initial buildings just that much more quickly. That's why uh, Huns had it removed, as well as Goths had it removed, uh, specifically with Deathmatch in mind, because uh, those were two uh, powerhouse civs for Deathmatch in uh, AOC, and so they had Treadmill Crane removed to balance them out a little bit. Alrighty, so next up we have Chemistry, which every civ has. Chemistry... Murder Holes and Ballistics are the only three that every civilization has, in case I didn't mention it earlier. Uh, obviously, it gives every, all your uh, archer units and towers and stuff plus one attack, and it's the uh, pre prerequisite for gunpowder units. Uh, and obviously, it's the for Bombard Tower as well. Uh, it, it's probably the most common upgrade you get at the university, so uh, I don't think I need to go into a whole lot of... Uh, explanation with it. Uh, I guess the only things that you might think benefit from it, but don't. Uh, fire ships don't benefit from it. Uh, Arambai and Conquistadors don't benefit from it, but they don't benefit from any any of those. Essentially, as a rule, if it benefits from your uh, Fletching Bodkinero Bracer, it benefits from chemistry. I think that's... I think that covers, if not every situation, almost every situation. Anyway, Siege Engineers is next. So, siege weapons uh, have plus one range, except for rams, obviously, and cause 20% more damage to buildings, and 40% uh, for petards. Now, this is a very good tech. Uh, again, uh, around half the civs in the game have it. Uh, the extra range and the 20% more damage are both very good. We will, uh, I'll just demonstrate that for you with a few different siege weapons. I actually had to start this one first, just because... 
That way I didn't have to bother with triggers. Anyway, here we can first see with some trebuchets. Uh, my trebuchets have siege engineers. You can see from the plus one range, whereas these Chinese trebuchets do not have siege engineers. Looks like it'll be just one less volley from these two trebuchets, which I think is a pretty... Uh, this is a pretty practical example of the, the time to kill difference, at least as far as uh, a bunch of trebuchets go. But trebuchets are not the only siege unit that benefits from this, and I do want to show you guys uh, at least uh, another couple examples. All right, so here we are with some siege rams. Uh, obviously no extra range, but I still just wanted to demonstrate that, yes, even though you don't see them get the extra range, they are still benefiting from the plus 25% damage, as my siege rams, uh, you know, are, are, it's a pretty noticeable difference, right? That's what, 10 in-game seconds or something? That can be the difference between, you know, destroying a crucial castle or not. So yeah, even if you're just going for, say, your Vikings and you're going for Arbalest Siege Ram, very common, uh, you know, it's still worth it to pick up Siege Engineers. It's a little expensive, but because it costs wood and food, it is 600 wood, 500 food, it is, you know, it, that's that's doable in Imperial Age. And if you have the, the resources, you can see that it's definitely something that's worth getting even for Rams. All right, so last example I wanted to show for Siege Engineers uh, was for Onagers. Which, uh, yes, the anti-building bonus does help here, but something that is more important is obviously anti-unit. And you can see right there that because I had Siege Engineers, I had the extra range and was able to, uh, you know, fire a shot and run away before the enemy Onager could even attack me. So Siege Engineers, definitely very helpful uh, for Onagers in that regard as well. Also, notably, it means they outrange Arbalests. Um, and Elite Skirmishers, I guess, uh, which have 8 range with full upgrades. And now, of course, we have 9 range, so you're even more effective that way. Uh, just wanted to note that Siege Engineers does also affect uh, Bombard Cannons and Scorpions, which I did not show. But Scorpions are uh, mostly anti-unit anyway. So, I mean, the extra range is helpful in the same regard, because it means uh, for Scorpions, you then match the range of Arbalests, because you get 7 plus 1. Um, but the anti-building bonus doesn't really matter that much. Uh, petards, yes, it does make them better, but that's not really something you'll see often. And Bombard Cannons, again, it is helpful, but it's pretty much uh, the same story as Trebuchets and Onagers as far as anti-building and anti-units. So I think you guys get the idea. But that Siege Engineer is definitely a very useful tech that is a pretty reasonable price that is also fairly Civ exclusive. So it's something to look out for, for sure. Our penultimate tack, or second to last, is Arrow Slits. Uh, this one is a... Uh, it's a tech that's gone through some changes, shall we say. It used to be super duper overpowered when it came out. Uh, it used to be in Castle Age and available for all civs. But now it is in Imperial Age and, again, available for around half the civs in the game or so. So it very unhelpfully says, increases the attack of towers. Uh, well, it actually... Increases the attack of watchtowers by one, guard towers by two, and keeps by three. And doesn't affect bombard towers at all. So, or castles or whatever. Just towers. So, you know, your watchtowers get plus one, guard towers get plus two, keeps get plus three. And again, I don't really need to show it off because it's just a, a straight damage boost. Like, and it's not expensive at all either. Just 250 food and 250 wood in Imperial Age is not expensive at all. If you're a sieve that has, if you're going for keeps, which usually means you're a sieve with pretty good uh, towers to begin with, then get arrow slits. It's just better, and yeah, there there really isn't a whole lot to say about it. It just makes your your towers better, and because it comes in in imperial age, it doesn't really matter as far as like, uh, you know, oh, it deals three damage to mangonels as opposed to one damage like guard towers compared to watch towers. It's just like okay, just. Do more damage. Doing more damage is good. So that finally brings us to Bombard Tower. The, uh, the awkward child, or sibling, I guess, of the regular tower line. 800 food, 400 wood, after researching chemistry, obviously comes in really, really, really late in the game. 
as only available to like I think 12 or 13 civs. It's one of the most exclusive techs in the game. But I'm sure most of you guys have seen these before. Uh, they're pretty amazing. And uh, I guess I will show you just how good they are. So here we see the Bombard Tower. One Italian Bombard Tower, two Italian Keeps, which are fully upgraded. And Italians do get uh, both, you know, fully upgraded Keeps and Bombard Tower. This just goes to show the strength of the Bombard Tower. I have two Keeps and only one Bombard Tower. And the Bombard Tower is going to be able to dispatch with these pesky Paladins a lot more quickly. Yeah, two shots Paladins, 120 base attack. Weirdly enough, it actually is affected by Blacksmith upgrade, so Fletching Bodkin Bracer uh, and Chemistry. Well, I mean, you need Chemistry, obviously. Uh, but they all affect this, uh, but Aeroslitz doesn't. It's a little bit weird. Also, they have a little bit less HP than Keeps, but it's very uh, minor. And you can just see how when it comes to dealing with big, heavy units like Paladins, uh, the Bombard Tower and its massive base damage is, you know, there's no real comparison. Uh, these guys are some of the best in terms of just, like, slowly creeping forward on the map. Uh, you know, civs that actually have Bombard Towers tend to be good at, you know, doing the whole slow push thing anyway. Italians are, you know, Koreans are, Portuguese are, that sort of thing. You can just see, like, the massive time to kill difference in favor of the one Bombard Tower. Of course, this is offset by the fact that Bombard Towers cost 100 gold, 125 stone, as opposed to the 50 wood, 125 stone of normal towers. Each kind of tower has the same stone cost, but 100 gold versus 50 wood. And obviously gold is a much more precious resource in, well, most games. So you can see that it's a lot less easy to field Bombard Towers. Uh, you know, you need the gold and the stone. And, well, the thing is, Bombard Towers fire more slowly, too, so they might even be a little bit worse at killing, like, a bunch of ranged units uh, compared to Arbalests, but it still is, you know, obviously massively in favor of the Bombard Tower, just because the Bombard Tower just kills almost anything in one or two hits, and is, uh, yeah, you need Siege to deal with this. Uh, it does deal pierce damage. <laughs> Back in Age of Kings, uh, Bombard Towers actually dealt melee damage. So uh, they, like, two-shot rams, or I think three-shot siege rams. But uh, yeah, that was obviously changed. So, you know, rams only take one damage from them. Uh, trebuchets and Bombard Cannons. Uh, also still going to be really good. I would say that in most situations, civs with Bombard Towers would favor Bombard Towers over keeps. Um, there are some exceptions, like, you know, you might want to go for, like, Korean keeps because they have extra range compared to their Bombard Towers. Teutons get to, uh, fire two cannonballs if you have, uh, them fully garrisoned with hand cannoneers. That's a, that's a fun little bit of trivia that isn't super helpful. But hey, it's there. Alright guys, so that's the university. Gone through all the techs and stuff. It's a little bit of a different building, like I said in the beginning. It... You, you often re don't research most of the techs here. A lot of them are very situational, but some of them, like ballistics and chemistry, are obviously super good, uh, pretty ubiquitous in terms of like how often you use them. But I thought that it would still be helpful for a lot of people to know just how good all of the upgrades are, sort of compare them to each other in some cases, how much of a benefit they yield over not having them. And I hope that you will be able to use this information to more effectively uh, crush your uh, opponents in the good old online ranked multiplayer scenarios. But yeah, uh, this did take a little bit more time than normal for me to make the video, recording all the clips and stuff and making all the scenarios. So definitely do leave a like if you enjoyed, but that will be all for this one and I will see you guys next time.